a powerful date function, but one that is strangely not present under date and time as we click on the formulas tab categories here for date and time functions is a function called date diff. It's not here. And yet I'm using it here in column G and here's how it's being used in cell G3. We're trying to calculate how long a person has been in this organization. Now I'm using a function called today and at the time of this recording, it's mid-July of 2010. And you can see clearly here, this person has been here seven years. And notice that there's a Y out here. The date diff function requires that we begin with a starting date, and then in this case, an ending date, which is actually the dynamic entry, today's date. This is the function today that's using today's date. You'll notice below that there's no prompting for arguments here, unlike typical Excel functions. So this is a strange thing indeed. Now, as I press enter here, and you saw the result earlier, it is a seven. And as you look at some of the other examples here, again, imagine we're talking about mid-July of 2010. The anniversaries are working, and it does work to the day exactly the way we use anniversaries and birth dates. In addition to Y, we could also use M to calculate months or D to calculate days. And there's some other variations on this as well. So in a different worksheet here called date diff examples, let's calculate, for example, the number of months a particular project or a person that we're referring to in columns A and B. We've got a time lapse between the two entries here. So date diff, left parenthesis. Starting date in this case is in cell A2, comma, the ending date is in B2. This time we want to calculate the number of months. Double quote M, double quote. And a quick double click here will copy this down the column. So we see in the other examples here, and here's one we can calculate most easily with our eyes, just looking at dates within the year uh, 2011, that's a six-month interval. Notice that it's almost seven months, but, well, not quite. And that's 27 days, so it's six months and 27 days. And even if it were six months and one day short, it's still going to indicate six months. We're calculating the difference here using M. Now, we could do this with days, but that's just more easily achieved simply by subtracting the two. But there are two other ways we could use this as well. We might want to know how many days after a certain monthly anniversary, perhaps. Now, that might sound a little contrived, but what if we were trying to tabulate a date difference here between these two dates as before, the one in A2 and the one in B2? This time, we want to know how many days it's been since the last monthly anniversary. So within double quotes, now we'll put in MD, the number of days after the monthly anniversary, eight days from the 20th to the 28th. And we can see what's happening in other examples as well here. The number of days after the monthly anniversary. We could also do this, meaning the number of days after the last yearly anniversary, put in a Y here. So this could be as high as 364, and we see the entries in here. So you can see the example here. We're three short of a year here as we use YD. So various uses for this. Again, I think it's most effectively used in the first example that we saw. In a dynamic database, you always want to know how many years someone has been here, but you don't want to have to constantly recalculate this. So using the today function as the later date, this allows us to tabulate a higher date. And certainly in a different kind of database where you have a birth date in, you would have a column called age, and this would calculate age to the day. And once again, it's a little bit strange in that you do not find documentation on this function in Excel. You will see it in various Excel books, but not within Excel itself but a great tool for calculating differences in a variety of different ways between dates.